Through the centuries, wisdom was shared by philosophers and writers. Hamlet, one of the characters created by Shakespeare, suggested that human knowledge is limited. In his words, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So it might be true that God works in mysterious ways. Baby Michael was dying. Twinkle, twinkle, you star, how I wonder what you are. Baby Michael was saved and everybody was elated. Professor, tell me, why do you think there is such a long waiting list? So we never kept a waiting list in. You know, we, as patients required surgery, so they were done. And if we had to do four or five patients a day, that's how it was done. Uh, we didn't work in one hospital. We worked at Baragwanath, where we did about eight or nine hundred a year. Now the facts. It's estimated every year 3,000 children die or remain disabled from diagnosed and treatable conditions. At least 1,000 are on state hospital waiting lists. How can you keep a waiting list? It just doesn't make sense to me. It is what I call continental genocide. You cannot keep a waiting list. We know that we can correct these children. And it's sad, it's really sad that you have to make a decision for one patient when you know there's another thousand or more also waiting. Fewer than 15 doctors in the private and the state sector are specializing in pediatric care. In Africa, there's hardly any cardiac surgery is performed, certainly not in neonates and infants. And, you know, for that reason, when I I gave a lecture many, a few years ago to the World Society in Istanbul in Turkey. And I call the situation in Africa continental genocide. So, and you know, it's tough, it's uh, tough words, but it's, it is true. And the incidence of um, heart disease in children, not only congenital, but also rheumatic, uh, the continent is full of rheumatic heart disease. It's, it's equal or greater than that of uh, HIV.
Baby Holly crossed my path in a way that I did not expect. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. This is Holland. Yeah. Holland Paris Pennington. Yeah. She was born on the 16th of February 2019. The nurses were looking at her very funny. They asked her, uh, did you hear anything about your baby? Like, is your baby fine? When you look at your child, does your child look okay? So she was confused about everything that these nurses, these questions that these nurses are asking her. Um, it was actually preterm labour. Mm -hmm. They ran tests on her for Down syndrome as well as hypoglycemia. If you can hear the way she breathes, this is how she's been breathing since birth. Just listen. They say only in August they're going to find out about that, uh, whether she, Holly, is um, a Down syndrome baby, only in August. Yeah. What is happening to the world? Yeah, they said that the blood bank is backlogged by a couple of months. I'm not sure, but that's what we were told, because her results were supposed to be out in April or May. And they told us we should come back in August. It's a bit of mixed emotions because yeah. I don't even know what to expect. I mean, her growth is slow, as you can mm -hmm. see. She's a bit small for four yeah. months. She is still a bit floppy, but then they say that comes with the AVSD as well. So yeah. we're not sure. But even if she is, then she's more precious. Yes, you know she's still I mean? our baby girl. She's still your baby yeah. girl, whatever is the case going to be. It must have been an enormous shock for you. It was, I think she was about three to four weeks old. Yeah. That was when we found out she has complete AVSD. At Albert Lituli, they confirmed that she has two holes in her heart. Oh, uh, yeah. Both seven millimeters wide. plan we weren't prepared for it yet I don't know it's like if we were told before we could have prepared ourselves for it but nobody mentioned anything to us so it was just a big shock to us and just recently I think it's about a month or a few weeks we've been told that she's gone into cardiac failure as well so they've put on medication for that do not believe that we should keep a waiting list for children with heart disease because it's curative. Now certainly in other countries like Western countries like the United States and Europe for example, no child is denied surgery should they require it. Uh, they all have surgery. It's only in the low income uh, countries where this situation prevails. And certainly as I say I think uh, we've got to start somewhere, but we've got to start somewhere to do something about this massive uh, number of children with heart disease who are now being denied treatment. And we have to get governments to understand that surgery for children with heart disease is, should be a priority. It is curative. It is not something which you operate on and the patient 
passes away a, a few years later, it is absolutely curative. And I have patients, many patients, operated on as neonates, who now come back to me and see me 30, 40 years later with their own children. This baby has two big holes in the heart. And as a result of that, there's excessive blood flow and excessive pressure in the arteries to the lungs. Now we know that uh, beyond the age of uh, four to six months, those arteries to the lungs become irreversibly damaged. And then it doesn't help to operate. How did you feel when you, when you found out about this? Yeah, so it was a bit scary. They said she has to have an operation done before she turns six months or she will not make it. Okay, how old is she now? She's currently four months. There's two months left? Yeah. They told us that they have a waiting list of over 400 babies. So they have two surgeons that can only operate twice a week and they were very blunt and upfront. They told us that Holland will not make it in time. The reason I didn't keep a waiting list is I've always thought that a waiting list is a death list because uh, while you're waiting, you inevitably die. And if you need open heart surgery as a neonate or infant, uh, it needs to be done soon. She's still my, yeah. my little angel. I love her. Yeah. She's, she just started smiling. It just, it, it, I don't know, it just brings a spark to us, yeah. You know, my view is that every child born in this world who has a cardiac defect should have corrective cardiac surgery should they require it, regardless of your economic circumstances. Sadly, that is, is not the case. Uh, you know, it depends on whether you can afford it. The initial cost was 400,000 Rand. What? But that was without a surgeon doing the op for free. The total cost is 400,000 Rand. We have tried fundraising on our own. We've opened a GoFundMe account. People are able to check it out. It's going really, really slowly at the moment. function is for us to get money for the hospital stay. It's beyond my human understanding, a painful discovery. How is God now going to work in mysterious ways?
So we call the Children's Cardiac Foundation of Africa and what we do is we work towards helping children um, born with structural heart defects get heart surgery and it really is as simple as helping a child that can't afford medical care to get the surgery they need to live. I know it's a very difficult thing to ask to save baby Holly and there are many of them. There are thousands of these babies with the same illness and heart disease. And perhaps if we can save baby Holly, we can save so many more. Holland's case is quite a special case and the family actually contacted us a few months ago to say that um, Holland's kind of really sick and she needs her surgery by the time she turns six months old, please can you help us? And the first thing we say is that, unfortunately, we also have a process to try and make it fair for every mother that has a sick child. Um, Holland had a little bit of bad timing because at that, day, at that time, we'd actually just selected three babies for heart surgery. Um, and unfortunately, because we'd committed to those families already that we were going to do their surgeries, Holland didn't get the chance to go on that list. So unfortunately, um, for them, it's a little bit of bad timing, but also the fact that the list is so long that they're not a high enough priority on that list to get surgery at the hospital they've been treated at. It's a very emotional thing, I think, when you connect with moms and their kids, and it's easy to say Holland's the right child because you know the name and you've seen the face versus the other 400 moms. Um, for us, in the foundation, we actually have a, quite a structured process, so we de-identify all of the kids that come to us, and we have a panel of medical specialists making the decision based on kind of the information they get, so it does become a little bit of a clinical exercise. I just think that regardless of who the child is, every child we help is a child that's going to survive and going to get to adulthood, and that's kind of worth it. So whether it is Baby Holland or any of the other 400 babies, if we have a chance to help one child, then for me, we should do this no matter what. Shut it, ma'am. Why? Can we close this chapter with a smiling baby, like baby Michael? I want to thank the people for their support. I want to thank people who contributed, people who prayed, people who are still praying. Uh, and yes, we just need help. 